Okay, ladies and gents, come in, come in. We are perfect timing. The market is a little shudder. The uh, equity market, as US equity markets, a little shudder just as I started the webinar. Let's see where she closes today. Of course, we've got Fed coming, oh, FOMC coming up tomorrow. Um, shenanigans until then. Uh, Chris Weston, actually, if you're following Pepperstone on Twitter, Chris Weston posted a really excellent video explaining some of the um, potential outcomes of the Fed, if they do a 25 base point cut, the 50 base point cut, the language and all that type of stuff. So that's worth kind of looking at and maybe working out your game plan um, for the different scenarios. There are multiple different permutations that we could have. Um, this isn't a webinar about that at all, but, you know, just using that type of thing, someone who's an expert in that field and then kind of folding it into your trading plan, your strategy, your area of expertise, which is, you know, potentially chart patterns or momentum or mean reversion, whatever you're going to play. And I think just maybe it's okay to sit out during Fed. That's fine. But I also think sometimes just coming up with different ideas, like, hey, if we suddenly push in this direction hard, we reverse, will I take a break to the high side? That type of thing. Um, so we'll get started in a moment, guys. Give a couple more minutes um, so I can waffle on a little bit more about Fed ideas. And maybe that's something we can we can cover at some point in the webinars. Uh, I've got a, got a few coming up over the next uh, few weeks. Got the election coming up. Definitely going to do an election webinar talking about ideas and ways to potentially uh, trade the election either on the night or on the other the kind of news flow that goes up, uh, starts to flow, should I say, as we're coming up to the vote itself. But for a big number like the, or a really high impact headline like this Fed meeting, you know, I think it just, it just the simple way to approach it is to think of different ways that things that could happen with price so the market you like to trade i think spreading yourself too thin is dangerous if you're trying to watch gold you're trying to watch cable you're trying to watch nasdaq you're trying to watch rates i think that's dangerous i think you focus on one market that you're a specialist in and say right here's my idea if we kind of fall to the downside and then we start to rip back up you know, maybe I'll look to trade that. If we fall to the downside and we kind of do a lot of work to the downside and then we start to reverse at the end of the day, will I look for that? You know, this type of thing, will I wait until the press conference? Just these different ideas and thoughts. Will I wait for a trend to kick into gear? And if it's an obvious trend, will I buy a first pullback from that? Will I look to take a flight? You know, there's all these different ideas and thoughts. Um, and I think just being prepared and saying, hey, this is what I'd like to see to trade that is you know, it's a good way of operating. It's a good way of operating rather than flying by the seat of your pants. Oh, it's fed something bound to happen. I'm, I'm going to, you know, got to get involved with it. I think just careful and prudent planning or even stepping aside and going, you know what, I'm going to trade tomorrow. I'm going to wait to the next day. If something crazy happens and interesting from a price action perspective, day two follow through or day two flush and reverse will set up. Anyway, today, ladies and gents, I want to get started and talk about mastering the art of trade review. But before I do, before I do, this, if I see myself, yes, you can see that. Good. Uh, this is a real old school book. This one is called Studies in Tape Reading by Wyckoff, actually. He calls himself Rolo Tape here. And here's an interesting little extract I want to uh, mention to you. The study of responses is one of the most valuable in the tape reader's education. It is an almost unerring guide of the technical position of the market. Of course, all responses are not clearly defined. It is a matter of indifference to the tape reader as to who or what produces these tests or critical periods. And then it goes on to say, so to translate that, this is when we talk about responses of the market going through key levels. So when we get flushes through levels that reverse quickly, that's what Wyckoff talked about in the, when was this? 20, it's got to be 20, 1910. 1910 right the same type of psychology of hey what's the price response to something interesting so if we kind of put that with our fed idea hey this is bullish whatever the bullish thing may be price has responded in a negative manner oh it was to sell the news event or if we look at it from a pure technical perspective that's a key level from yesterday the yesterday's low print price goes down looks underneath it what's the price response it's an immediate sell-off capitulation style flagging at lows okay the response is this selling from a tape reader's perspective we know who's in charge so it's one so thinking about how price responds to different levels and if you peel in catalyst with that like the fomc then that can really give you an idea of the underlying price action. Um, and I've done a webinar on that exclusively before. We've talked about 
you know, price action, and we talked about that type of thing. So go and check that out. It's on, it's on Pepstone's uh, YouTube channel. But I think as a trader, you're a technical trader, North Star of, okay, tape reading, it's not just about reading the depth of market. And in fact, it was never about that in the beginning. That's kind of evolved over time. But it's about understanding how price reacts to certain levels and reading the psychology of the market through the price speed response and all that other type of stuff. Okay, so let's get to it, ladies and gents. With today, we're talking about mastering the art of trade review. Um, first of all, I must please remind you that spread betting CFDs very risky. You're trading with leverage, and you know how leverage works. I hope you do. If you don't, please have a double check what you're doing. How you're getting involved with this. Very, very good when it's working well because you're getting much, you're amplifying your gains, but also can work against you. You're amplifying your losses. So you have a losing trade, which all traders do. That's going to be amplified much, much more. The fact you're using leverage, pros and cons. Just understand the game you're playing and understand the risk you're taking and just really know, you know, what you're doing. And, and we really, really, really kind of firm about how much you're prepared to risk and how much you're prepared to uh, trade with. Okay, so what gets measured gets managed, Peter Drucker. Very, very good quote from that gentleman. Um, of course, that's what we're trying to do today. So today I want to cover really um, some, is this as sexy as some other stuff? No, it's not. But often this is the thing that moves the needle the most, right? We've done strategies and I've I'll more than likely share different strategies as well as we move forward with these. Loads of other in the, loads of others in the, in the archives, different strategies, VWAP, opening range breakout, this type of stuff. Fine. They're cool. They're headline stuff. That's great. But the way to get better at trading is to make incremental improvements and just keep adjusting your heading very, very slightly. However, if you move the needle too much or the heading too much, you end up going around in circles. If you don't do it at all, you end up paddling, 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 burning a lot of energy. And all you've done is you've done a big, big loop. You can imagine a ship in the ocean, the heading's just off. He's burning fuel and he's going round and round and round and actually he's done just a big loop and back to where he was. And some traders are like that. They've been trading many, many years. They've got a lot of experience. They've burnt a lot of fuel, a lot of energy, a lot of effort and actually haven't got very far. They've got a reasonable journey and reasonable time of, of, of uh, screen time. But they haven't got very far. And I think that this is really the thing that helps you put those two together. So the fuel and energy you're using to drive forward and the experience, but also just keep just tapping yourself on the right heading. Okay, so let's get straight to it, ladies and gents. Uh, just a quick reminder, even though I have been trading for a couple of decades, I don't have all the answers um, and I never would never claim to. Uh, my ego is not big enough. The market has removed any ego from me. I will share with you my key ideas and thoughts and things that I think uh, work well. And... I run uh, Traders Mastermind, which I get to see, and that, that I get to see other traders. So other traders who have kind of just tipped over the line into profitability, had a couple of good years. Traders are really just struggling, and so I get to observe not only my own trading experience, but I get to see others as well. So I think I'm quite well placed to help you out. And I say this kind of every week as a as a, as a point of view of hey. Just take away what you think is valuable from this and go and do your own analysis and research. You know, I feel like I, I have got some good things to share and I'm well placed to present those to you. However, it's up to you to kind of do that and go away and kind of dig around and say, hey, is this any good? It's going to work for me. You know, is it, it suit my personality style, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that's that. Okay, let's go. And so today we're going to cover a, a two-part trade review process. And I why two parts, you might say. You might say, Mark, why two parts? Um, because I think that having two gives you two different focus points and goals. Number one, you do a daily debrief, I call it, which is like a report card. Some people call it a daily report card. And that reviews your daily performance, right? And number two, you do one a week, a week in focus process to assess your weekly performance. I'm going to dig into those. And hopefully by the end of this webinar, you are going to say, okay, I like that idea. It's not going to take me too long. I'm not going to give you reams and reams of stuff you have to do. I'm not going to say, hey, you've got to spend hours and hours doing this. It's short, it's simple, and it should be effective enough to help you improve your trading based on what you're already doing. Because that's the benefit of doing a trade review process, right? It's trades you've already taken. It's not hypothetical setups. It's not stuff you might do in the future. It's not, I must do this, I must do that. It's stuff you have already done 
and now you're just making minor adjustments to try and uh, improve stuff. Okay, so um, why do we create two different processes for review? So the daily report card or daily performance review is really to, I mean, you know what it's like, right? You trade in the day, um, you feel like sometimes you've had 12 rounds in Mike Tyson, you're like, geez, you know, it's a real battle. I feel like I had a green day, but I really, really earned that. But the next day comes and you forget all about that day. So the important thing to do is to conduct a daily review whilst it's still fresh in your mind. Because part of the thing is going to be what were you thinking? Why did you come up with that idea? And when you go back to it at the end of the week and you look at what happened on Monday morning, why did you take that DAX trade? Or why were you shorting cable there? You're like, I can't really remember to be honest. I don't even know what I was thinking at that point in time. So that's important why we do this daily report card. And then the week in focus review is really... Um, you're looking at the at the persistent themes that occur throughout the week. So it's a broader perspective, and I kind of show you some of the ideas and tactics to do that. And then you make the little tiny adjustment, maybe in your plan or maybe in your focus or maybe in your methodology for next week, so that as a short-term trader, as an active trader, you're responding to the dynamic nature of the markets rather than looking at your performance at the end of the month, it's too late to make the changes. You might be doing something very, um, it, you're out of sync. You're out of sync. You're a bit early on the day, a bit early for trades. You're a bit late on the flush trades. You're chasing stuff, whatever it might be. And you know this is a game of seconds sometimes. Depends on the time frame we're trading, of course. But it's a game of a couple of candles sometimes, right? Depends on the time frame we're trading. So that's why we do it in this cadence. The daily report, while it's still fresh in your mind to extract that valuable information whilst it's still there. And the week in focus is kind of looking at a big overview and saying, right, do I need to make some course corrections to get me to the next station, the next level? What do I need to tweak and adjust? That might not be anything, but most of the time you just need a little adjustment. That might be operational from a kind of trading perspective. It might be psychological. It might be any of these type of things. Okay. So Let's talk about a daily debrief. And by the way, if you've got any questions, I don't think I mentioned it, you're very welcome to ask them in the Q&A section. I will get to them at the end. Last week, we were running quick. I had a lot of slides and I was plowing through it. This week, we will have time to answer the questions so I can slow down a little bit because I know that I haven't got thousands and thousands of slides to cover because when I'm doing this, I just want to cram so much information in. But I forget sometimes that we have a limited amount of time together. I wish we're back again next week anyway with a different topic. But for this week, I can take some time. Okay, daily debrief. So after you've had that trading day, we're going to audit the performance, okay? And we want to look at our trade performance, so our P&L. We want to look at the best trades, the worst trades, an assessment of our trading psychology. So what's our mindset? What are we thinking? As we know, that's such an important, critical element in our trading. What was good? What needs work? Pretty simple, but actually this is where you kind of find the little patterns over time. Um, here's a daily performance review that uh, we use for our trades and trades mastermind. Top date PL grade that you've given yourself out of five. So you can do whatever you want here. This is an idea you can kind of crack up with your own number of trades you took on the day, your focus area, your best trade, your worst trade. So what was good, what wasn't so good, and performance analysis. What did you do well today? What needs improvement? What can you take from today to improve tomorrow? Simple, simple stuff, because the last thing you want to do at the end of the trading day is sit there and write reams and reams of stuff. Now, if it's, if it's you and you're quite happy doing that, you're quite happy you know, doing all that stuff, that's fine. But sometimes you're really fatigued. You don't want to do that. You want to do something simple. And you want to do something in the same format each time. So at the end of the week, you can look at these sheets and go, right, now I've got an idea of these five trading days, what's going on, what my grade was, how that relates to my PL, what was the best, what was the worst, etc. Okay, so one thing to mention here is the objective isn't to make any massive changes to your plan, right? And that's important. I want to kind of pause on that. That's why I put this in a separate slide here. Is you know, we want to just audit and measure. We're not making changes based on one day. That's a very dangerous game to play. We've probably all fallen into that trap. Oh, you know, I made my widen my stop because I got pinged out, you know, and it went my way. No, no, no. Okay, we want to see a pattern of performance and a pattern of habits and a pattern before we make changes. There is an argument also to suggest that actually sometimes weekly changes might be too frequent. And that's fine if you say, Mark, you know what? I trade a little bit of a higher time frame. I want to do it every month, then I wouldn't say no. I'd say, listen, you would just adjust and understand that there's two different levels 
of analysis. One is that regular frequent analysis. And if you're a high time frame trader, maybe that's weekly. And then there's that infrequent objective assessment, and that might be monthly for you. So just adjust it based on the time frame you're trading, right? Okay, so the next part of the daily review, I consider to be separate. Now, a lot of people kind of bundle this all in uh, in the same thing, right? And they say, okay, you, know, you do this and do that. But I think that you've got two aspects here. You've got one is your performance. And number two is the market's performance. They're two very different things. And I honestly believe, and I see this time and time again, and, you know, thinking back to kind of, you know, late 2000s, you know, I would always muddle this up, always muddle it up. And it, it's two distinct, it's two distinct things. So one is how are you trading? And the other is what's the market doing? And very often when we're looking at the market and we're looking at the at the price action and we're watching the chart, whatever vehicle you trade and market you trade, we are so caught up in trying to trade that we actually miss some patterns that are repeatable and have edge. I send out a daily email and one of the daily emails that I send out this week is, um, or I've sent out this week is talking about uh, just observing patterns you know last week we had this v-shaped reversals on nasdaq kind of three days in a row very unusual and the point was that you can be prepared for the next one when you are really focused on seeing stuff and very often when you have the burden and pressure of performance on your shoulders as a trader you don't actually see the patterns i know it sounds weird but you might feel this as well you're kind of looking to trade just focus on taking this trade you're trying to buy this trade you're trying to do this trying to do that you don't actually get to see and review so this is a very very important step very important to mark up your charts and you put your actual trades on the charts but this is the key part you make notes on any price observations and any potential improvements to your execution but you do this from a perspective of hey i'm looking at through the lens of complete objectiveness uh, objectivity objectiveness i made that one for you objectivity and you just have this complete focus of hey how could i perform better what has the market done what could i have reasonably seen in the heat of the moment that is going to help me now we'll talk about hindsight bars in a second but here's an example from one of the traders who won't mind me sharing it keep anonymous anyway but example what, what what he would do right he puts little a little markers on and says stuff like flat overnight pulling back to the pre-market little little observations right oh I, it's punched up through here it's retested here the vwaps there blah blah and this is just something you'll do every day or throughout the throughout his uh trading session just go just making observations right another one here from a trader won't mind sharing this again tell you who it is but marking his trades on putting the little annotations close the break it took a profit this high yesterday's high so just marking up your charts this is such an important such a such an important um process and here's a little hint for you when you're doing this as i said look through an objective lens right you it, it's easy to fall into the trap of oh i, I, I gotta bought that high i would have bought that high or, oh i would have sold the high and i would have bought the low with size and yes you've got to be really realistic and sometimes just moving your chart up to the hard right and kind of reviewing as you go through is playback functions on trading views, playback functions if you want to do that way. Or what I like to do is print it off or screenshot, put onto an iPad or tablet and just mark it up like that. I think that just being able to look at it and say, okay, and we're going to run through one together in a second. You know, what happened? What really happened? What could I look for next time? What's valuable information here? What's not so valuable information here? Um, and I think, you know, just be able to print off a chart and just getting away from the screens, you know, just, just looking at things through a different perspective, you know, that, that, I guess that's the key of this, right? And I'm not a psychologist, um, but I think that that's why this is so effective is that you are saying, okay, trading day's done. Let me print off the chart. Let me look at it. And because you're now looking on a piece of paper or you're looking on a tablet or you're in a different environment, you get to see things that you wouldn't do before. And this is how you create new strategies for yourself. The amount of strategies that I've developed, that just been looking at a chart and going, I didn't even see that. It's happened the last four days. What am I doing? Right. Now I see, okay, I'm ready for it day five or ready for it day three. And it might be a little edge. It might just be a little kind of momentum ignition at the top of the hour, bottom of the hour, reversal at a certain time. I might be able to develop a strategy that works for several months off it, that type of stuff. So it's just something about changing that perspective. And obviously you don't have to do it this way, but if you're going to do it, I think it's a very good way of doing things. So 
Let's run through one together, right? I printed this off, uh, where was it, half an hour? No, three quarters of an hour ago, actually. If you just had a big sell-off after that, then where was the DAX? But there you go. So imagine it's the DAX. Imagine it's the DAX. This is the DAX. Imagine you are done for the trading day and you're reviewing the chart. So let's look through this briefly together and give you an idea of what maybe you'd look at. Okay, so I've marked down the open and I've marked down the close. It's a 24-hour product, of course, with Pepperstone, but I want to just look at the cash session. So I might, might mark down stuff like, hey, look, for the first hour, we didn't really do a lot. We kind of had these wicks, we had these tails, not much was happening, and we had a gap up from the prior day. I'd already done my contact assessment, by the way, and that's a separate thing, separate kind of issue. But just looking at the chart you're trading, or you have been trading, and saying, okay, we had a bit of a fake to the downside, that came back up to the opening print. We were sitting around there, and it wasn't till 10 o'clock that we actually started to break out form an uptrend. So I might mark down on that. 10 o'clock breakout. Um, was there anything that kind of was a precursor for that? Yeah, maybe the dip below the low first that was that fell. We, we talked about in this book, studies and tape reading. What's the response? Well, the, the early dip, you know, in the first hour or so was bought. And actually, that might have indicated that I would be interested in, in, in trading a breakout to the high side. And there was a little breakout pullback type trade there. Okay, fine. You've got to be careful. You're not saying, oh, I definitely would have done that. But you're just, you're just noting down clues. So you then I take that and say, false break, precursor to potential breakout to highs. We're in uptrend already, reasonable bullish environment. Okay, maybe that's maybe that's good to go. Uh, maybe that would be good to go next time. So tomorrow, would I look for the same thing? And then you kind of start to kind of build this reference point. And then you might say, okay, we had a bit of an uptrend here. It wasn't really much opportunity to buy a pullback. We were stretched away from the VWAP. We kind of had this little double top here. People, some people call it a tweezer, right? Tweezer, something like that. And then we roll back over. We didn't really get pulled back to here. Oh, how could I have grabbed on that? Would I have kind of sold this engulfing here or this um, outside bar, should I say, here? And you just start to observe and you, you kind of look and you go, well, it wouldn't really reversal signal. It happens to be the top, but we didn't really have another attempt back up. Um, okay, so maybe this wouldn't have been here. Ah, but the VWAP, look at this. The VWAP coincided with this kind of cluster of support here. Okay, so next time after we've extended away from the VWAP quite heavily, you know, maybe I'll look to buy the VWAP. And that ignition candle kind of looked like it was um, a reasonable momentum ignition. Okay, fine. We had this kind of flat top resistance here, broke out, failed. You might then say, oh, we had a fake out and it was just before the US Open, roll back over, wanted to be at VWAP for about the v, uh, US Open. So you're just analyzing. I'm not going to go for every little intricate thing, but you see the point. You're going through the day and you're just observing and you're not suggesting, oh, I would have sold the high and I definitely would have taken that. You're just making an observation. You're just saying, hey, listen, on a rotational day where we've pushed the highs, tested VWAP, if we're sitting back at highs and we've got 30 minutes until the US Open, and we see, and maybe you see this pattern time and again, that actually it starts to roll back and sit a view up for the US Open, then guess what? You're going to be ready for that the next trading day. I'm not saying things repeat all the time, but just this process. And how long will that take us together? You know, three, three minutes or something. And maybe you take five minutes doing it. But just the process of going through that chart review, as well as what trades you took, I think is the perfect scenario at the end of the trading day. Okay, so... That's your daily review. Daily review is your performance. And if we go back, I'll just show you this again. I'm sure people will ask what this was. So this is something you can just come up with, right? Your p &L, your grade, your number of trades, your focus area, best trade, worst trade, what did you do well, what needs improvement, et cetera. Good questions to ask yourself, okay? And you're marking up your chart as a secondary process. Now you've done your daily review. Done. Done for the day. Shut the screens off going to something else you're ready for tomorrow we should do your pre-market prep before the open but one of the things you'll do in your pre-market prep is you start to look at hey what happened yesterday and you've got it there ready you've reviewed it things are fresh in your mind and you remember things as well you might say oh do you know what at that point in time uh, there was a little bit of news came out and there was a bit of a rumor coming of this and that and i heard started to see things on this or at that point in time gold broke to high, whatever it might be you might there's some things you remember when you're heat the moment that you wouldn't do normally so this is a great time to do that review okay there's your daily let's talk about now the um the weekly so how would you do this how would you kind of look at this and a reminder you've got your daily process which is those two things and you've got your weekly process and i like to have those distinctly separate because they mean a separate thing to me so the weekly review process 
is slightly deeper. Conduct it after market close on Friday. So over the weekend, Sunday evening is a great time. Many traders sitting down on Sunday evening preparing for the trading week. Your objective here is to gather all those daily reports and then make any adjustments needed to your trading plan. Okay, so how do we do that? So gather all those daily report cards. And what you're looking for now is commonalities or themes. And something I talk about very, very often here is there's often clues in your trading. There's often stuff and clues in your trading that you can adjust and change. Or should I say this? Often this is a better way of phrasing this. There are clues in your trading that tell you you should be doing something different. So are you constantly going a little bit early on those exhaustion trades? Are you constantly a little bit late on those extension trades or momentum trades? That Those are the clues that you see. Hey, look at those five trades. Three of those are a little bit chasey. I got away with that because X, Y, Z, blah, blah. You start looking for that. That's a very easy, low-hanging fruit win for you. Because what you can do is you can say, hey, on these momentum plays, they're good. They tend to work out okay. But I, I, I could probably just look at that. If I looked at all these, especially last week, if I just waited five minutes, I would have got a better fill. Okay, so maybe that's something I put down and something to consider as an adjustment to my trading plan. And this is the thing that you look for. You look for, oh, look, I'm really good at spotting that. I could do some work with this. I take too many trades really on these type of days. I'm hesitating to pull the trigger here. And going through all those report cards, you start to see what your real problem is. Because the trouble we have with tra uh, as traders is we look at our p and you know, especially for developing trader, you're like, huh. Not quite where I want it to be, right? I mean, it's, it's not really where I want it to be at the moment. And you start thinking, oh, I know what's going wrong. And then you start mulling in your mind, hey, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. When in reality, it's probably one big thing that needs fixing. And by conducting the daily report, that'll be highlighted. You'll immediately go after you look at the daily reports. Look, man, I'm taking too many trades. I'm holding losers too long. I'm not holding winners long enough. I'm giving back too much PL on the, uh, I know when I'm up on a day, um, whatever it might be. And, and this is why you have these daily reports. You can go through and you can look for the commonalities or themes, the positives and the negatives, and then, and then adjust, right? And then adjust. So if we, if we look, if we've looked at these, right, we look at our daily report cards and we say to ourselves, all right, first things first, give yourself a pat on the back. We don't do that as traders. We are almost like, no, 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 you shouldn't be doing this. No, 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 you should stick to your rules. No, 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 hold the trade. Bad boy, bad boy. That, that's no good. And of course, we need to push ourselves to improve and put things in place operationally to help us improve. More on that in a moment. But give yourself a pat on the back. You know, this is why I say, what did you do well? It's important to say that. It's important. And I'm not going to scroll back to that daily report uh, performance review. But it's important to put down stuff you did well, small things, because, you know, there's a, there were studies done that if you're constantly berating yourself and constantly beating yourself up for not doing the thing you want to do and not giving yourself a reward, then eventually your, your brain just goes, well, sod it. I don't, you know, I'm not even going to bother trying because there's no, I get no, I get no, no hit from it. I get no dopamine hit from it whatsoever. I get no recognition. Um, and you know what it's like, right? If you're doing something, maybe you're at school or maybe you're, you you had a job or whatever it might be, you do something, you get no recognition, it doesn't feel good. You don't like, human beings don't like that. So we're the same internally as traders, right? And if you're working a trading team, then someone would come and say, hey, you know what? You're really good at catching those lows there. Hey, you know what? You're really good at kind of holding trades when you get on the end of it. Now, you might be weak in other aspects, but that is the thing you hold on to and go, yeah, okay, I can get better at that. So always give yourself a pat on the back for things you're doing well. I think that's, in, I think that's very, very important. And I, I know the type of trader you are. Generally speaking, the people who get involved in trading are ambitious, are driven, want to succeed and move forward, but we can be slave drivers sometimes. So then you analyze where you want to improve and you come up with a potential solution. And this is where you must be solution focused. So, you know, example, you, you find you closed a lot of trades um, in too early last week. So you write down the challenge and rather than just saying to yourself, well, don't close the trades too early, you come up with a solution. This is the missing piece of the puzzle for so many traders for improvement. We can come up with the problems easy enough. I don't do this. I don't do this. I don't do this. I don't do this. That's easy. But the next step is missing from traders because often they do is they say, I don't do this. 
or I do this, bad habit. Answer, don't do bad habit. And you might be saying, yep, that's me, that's me. That was me for ages. Like, oh, I'm, I'm breaking my rules on this. Don't break rules. Simple. Don't break rules. You say, well, I'll, I'll do that. And then it never works. It never works. It never works. You get frustrated. The better way to do it is to say, hey, I'm doing this. What's a solution, an operational solution I can put in place right now that will over time fix this idea here? Solution. So if you find you're closing your trades a little bit early, you know what? Rather than saying, well, don't close them early, hold them. Say, okay, well, you know what I'll do is I'll have a couple of targets. I'll take half off of the first target and I'll trail the rest behind a moving average or I'll trail the rest every 30 minutes. I'll move it up by 50 points, whatever it is, right? You, you know how you trail, trail stops. Mm -hmm. But the, the key here is you have challenge and solution. And being solution focused, again, is something that is missing from so many traders' playbook. They come up with the problems. I can't do this. I do this. But they just go from there to, well, we'll just fix it. We'll just do this. It's not as easy. You know it. I know it. It's very hard sometimes to change the way our brains are hardwired without taking it a little step at a time. We'll just close half. Just close half. Just try not to overtrade, try and overtrade a little bit less. It's just that gradual progress. Um, and you know, I love the hint here, and I kind of I've mentioned this already in the in the earlier slide. You know, it's important to just pick one thing at a time, right? It's important to say, hey, you know, I may have you may have a selection of challenges in your trading. Maybe you aren't holding trades. Maybe you're jumping in too early. Maybe you're over trading. Fine. And you may then be legitimate, right? But just pick one thing at a time. And as I mentioned, say, you know, then you say, just do it. Try to find that practical way. So if you go through that daily report, a performance review, you look at your daily report cards and you go, it's a bit of a mess, right? I over traded here. I chased here. I, you know, no wonder I'm red on the week. It can feel demoralizing and a bit devastating, like frustrating, and you want to just kind of scrunch them up and go, let's see what happens next week. A better approach and why you conduct this performance review every day so that you can do it at the end of the week is to say, well, what's the biggest thing there? You know what? The biggest thing for me is every so often I, I, I go over my daily risk limit. Nah, that's dangerous. How can I stop doing that? Well, just don't do it, little voice says. Well, yeah, I, I, I know that, but I'm still doing it. I'm still behaving like that, and I don't want to. So, okay, what should I do? Well, let me try and um, put a timer in place and kind of every hour just double check what my risk limit is. Or let me make sure that I'm trading uh, the small enough size that I'm not actually going to ever over overcome my risk limit. Or let me set this or let me do this. What operationally or practically can you put in place to help you improve that one thing that you're trying to improve? And then next week you say, that's my focus point. And you can see now how if you did this consistently week after week after week, rather than being that ship that just goes round in a big bloody circle in the ocean, you would be a trader that actually managed to, you go off course a little bit. It happens, man. You know, it's never going to be perfect. But you come back on course. You go, ah, but I fixed that. And then I fixed this. And then I fixed that. And all of a sudden you see land and you go, you know what? Here we go. So things are starting to happen now. Things are starting to happen because you found because you've done the review process, you've done your weekly reviews, and you've looked at it through a practical lens and said, "How can I fix this? Solve for X. We're all entrepreneurs here. We're all trading. This is an entrepreneurial venture, doing something. It's a performance endeavor. Okay, solve for X. The problem is this. What's the solution? We'll just stop doing it. That's not going to cut it." What's the operations? What's the practicality? What's the actual steps you need to take to get there? That's, I know I'm laboring the point a little bit, but that's such an important aspect of trading. Okay. So now you've done your, your, you've looked at all your daily report cards and you've kind of come up with your one idea, you've come up with that commonality in the theme. And let's be honest, sometimes you might go, you know what, well, that was a damn good week. In which case, marinate in that feel good and say, look, I ran the trade there. That was great. I didn't get caught out there. It was a red day, but I didn't get caught out. I traded to my plan. Five star here, four star here. Damn, that was a good week. And whether it was red or green, you just say, hey, I want to do more of that. And so the adjustment might not be from a negative perspective. It might be a positive impact, a positive influence, should I say. You say, actually, look, this is what I want to do more of. Make sure I'm in the right frame of mind here. Make sure I'm pushing on the trades that are working well. Make sure I'm sizing up on the deals that I know that I've got a positive expectancy on, whatever it might be. Okay, so 
let's go back to um, your marked up chart. So if we remember, we had that kind of little DAX run through it very, very quickly. And I said, okay, this is kind of how you might mark up your charts. Um, and I do believe it's so easy, it's so much easier to see price action that way. It's so much easier to say, hey, look, look what happened. We tested that high, we failed. We The view app was an obvious support. Okay, brilliant. Okay, now I can look for it the next day. So, okay, how do you use, use that? So one is you, it helps you uh, kind of debrief and get stuff down on paper. A little bit like a journaling process, right? But subtly different. So what you want to look now is and say, get you all your charts for the week, the trades you took and the markets you were trading. And you say, hmm, is there something interesting that I can take from this that I might want to look for next week? I.e., you know, very often we're, we're testing lows in the early part of the morning session and we're bidding straight back up to the open. Okay, well, that's something I might want to watch out for next week. Or very often a rotational type day, we're kind of extending and, okay, after 6 p.m., if we have ignition candle on the VWAP, it looks like we push back to VWAP. You start to see things. And your objective as a trader isn't to go and trade the the simple textbook stuff that, okay, fine, a double top of this or that or the other. You know, to a certain extent, in the right context, all these things are effective. In the wrong context, completely useless. But as you to say, ah, oh, look, we had this double top, but actually look at the time of day it was. It was in this rotational environment. We'd already done this and tested the low. We were already within the prior day's range. We had some data coming up the next day. That's a very, very high probability trade for me. I can quantify the risk on that trade. I could, something I could potentially take again if I saw that. You join it down and you say, right, what's the next thing? Okay, what's the next thing? Ah, do we get a bid? We used to have that noon balloon. We used to have had power hour. We've had all these type of things, right? And these are repeatable patterns that you can only observe if you're looking at the markets through a different lens. And very often you miss if you're trading them and you're just looking at the markets with a with a view of oh, what trade can I make now? What trade can I make now? You don't see some of the patterns, which is why it's so important to mark up the charts. And then the other thing is, you know, is, is there a common theme? Like there's a common theme of... Um, Linda Rashke talked, talks a lot about this and she takes this from kind of Wyckoff and I think maybe Taylor, you know, is there a morning sell-off an afternoon bid? You know, is there, is there a theme that's constantly there? Is, there? is there an hour or a couple of hours that are constantly strong or constantly weak? Or is there a theme throughout the week of, hey, we filled the gap. Most of the times we've filled the gap. Most of the times we've done this. Most of the time we've closed near the highs. Most of the time we've tried to push in the last hour only to come back and close near the VWAP. You get the idea. Right? And if you're trading currency pairs, if you're trading DAX, you're trading DAO, it doesn't matter the same type of theme as there. You might be trading a currency pair and say, hey, listen, we break out of the Asian session for about 30 minutes and come straight back in. And that is something that's happened for the last week. Okay, well, I'm going to, well, no, guess what? I'm going to look for the same pattern next week. If we break out of that Asian session early in the morning when I'm trading and we start to run out of steam, I start to see reversal candle. I start to see some sort of engulfing or outside bar you might take it for a pull back to the Asian session high. You get the idea. It's marking up the charts and looking at things through that completely different lens. And even from this perspective of saying, what's the tape telling me? And the tape being what would price is, what's price telling me at that point? When it tries to go above a key level and stalls and does this, what's it telling me? It's telling me there is no more demand, or if there is, it's being overshadowed by supply. The supply of the mine imbalance is shifting back in the favor of the bears it could potentially be a short opportunity. Then you bolt in your risk management, then you bolt in all the other stuff that comes in with that. Okay, so once you've done this, and this is your weekly review, by the way, now you can make small adjustments to your trading plan. And as a reminder, your trading plan is your, your business model, if you like. Like, how am I going to trade? What are my setups? How much am I going to risk? All this type of stuff. I've done... Um, Pretty sure I've done a webinar where I've talked exactly about this before, and you can obviously look at that on Pepperstone's YouTube channel uh, or on the website, Traders Mastermind, if you like. So we won't go into too much depth here. But the idea here is you've got your plan of action, how you're trading. You've had your daily reports. You've done your weekly stuff. You've got these ideas. Now you make small adjustments. You never make big, pull big levers and you yank these big levers and go, I'm going to suddenly do this. You do that, you might do that if you find that actually, uh, let, let's just pause for a second. If you are going to make a big drastic change to your trading plan, do it at a certain point in time in future. Don't do it out of emotion. So if you say, hey, this is not working for me, I'm just screwing up all the time, this is a complete mess, say, okay, I'm going to stick to it till the end of the month. 
And at the end of the month, if I haven't got the performance I want or the results I want, I will rewrite it. Do it that way as opposed to just doing it, oh, man, it was a rubbish week and would have made massive adjustments. Because very often it's the small things that make the biggest changes. So you've got your training plan, you make small adjustments. And these might be, uh, you know, you know, I'm going to look for reversals at a certain time of day. Um, you know, I'm seeing that actually the chart showing me that this four o'clock time period, or actually when Europe closes, Dow gets a bid. Uh, when Europe closes, Dow, Dow starts to sell off. Or just before the close, we are, whatever it might be, I'm making stuff up, all these things we've happened, we've happened many times before, but it's, it's the thing you're looking for. It's an operational thing. And that's based on your marked up charts. Okay. And then also in the operational section would be, hey, I want to make sure that I wait just another 30 seconds when I'm putting the trigger on, on, on exhaustion plays. Or I want to make sure if I'm buying bull flags that I get a little dip below the low of the flag first before I buy. I want to see that, that tail before I get in. That's operational. And that, again, will be based on your performance and marking up your charts with your trades on. You say, hey, look, a bit early on these things. So there's a little adjustment. It's very small, just little tiny little one degree heading adjustment. Right, Nothing major, just very small things based on the market action and regime you've got in front of you because many traders are forcing themselves onto you know markets that, that, that you know forcing this right they're for, forcing their methodology on a market that's not really conducive to it and sometimes you have to adjust a little bit and sometimes a great plan has been working very well it needs a little tweak it's like i was buying that bid but actually that bid's running on for another 15 minutes or so and i often have to see one more test of the low before i buy it rather than it being exhaustion reverse so it slightly changes, but you don't see it, but you would do now because you've printed off your charts and marked them up. So you make the operational change. So operational change based on your performance, operational change based on the markup of your charts. That's the first thing. Second, important aspect, of course, the psychological. So is there a theme that after two losers in a row, very, very likely the third trade is a loser? Little stats like that are so useful. Like you might even go away now and say, listen, how many times um, do I have three losers in a row after two? And you probably find it's more than 50%. You'll probably find it's something like 70 odd percent. In other words, if you've had two losers in a row in quick succession, the chance of that third being a loser is very, very high. In which case you've got a negative expectancy. Well, guess what? You don't do that. After two losers in a row, you do something to recalibrate, reset, refresh, go away, have a walk, come back get ready for the next trade because you know that for whatever reason two losers in a row triggers you into frustration. You get a little bit angry. You're not going to start pounding the desk and smashing the screens, I'm sure, but you don't want to be kind of trading from an emotional perspective. There's a psychological um, adjustment to make. Again, small adjustments. We're not making big, big, massive things here because I just don't think it ever works unless you're taking a making a concerted effort to say, right, I'm rewriting my trading plan. It sucks. It's no good. This is not suiting me whatsoever. Fine. New chapter. In which case, that's a much bigger process. But I'm talking about these minor adjustments that you can make because very often, you know, you've got something that's sound, right? Your setup is good. Strategy is pretty good. Your risk management is good, but just it takes one thing in the recipe to be wrong and it tastes like, you know what, it tastes awful, right? It's just like a, a recipe, a cooking recipe, right? If you've got the wrong ingredient in one wrong ingredient, you've got, I'm trying to think of something on the fly, I'm not a chef, uh, I don't know, garlic in a, a brownie, let's say, right? Or onion in a brownie, there you go, onion in a chocolate brownie. I, I don't need to be going around you to know that ain't not going to taste good. But if you take out the onion, and the brownie's pretty good, right? The brownie's quite nice. You know, lemon in a thinking on the fly omelet, right? Nah, I don't think that's going to be very good. If you take the lemon out, the omelet's pretty nice. That's the same with many people's trading strategies and plans. The plan's pretty sound, but they're putting an onion in the brownie. They're just putting an onion there, and without the onion, it'd be all right. But you're kind of then trying to think, oh, I'm just not going to do brownies anymore. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I don't know why I've gone down this rabbit hole of cooking, so stick with me. <laughs> I'm going to do this. I'm going to change that. I'm going to do the other. So I don't know. It's just the onion, mate. Just take the onion out. You'll be right. And so you take the onion out and you cook it. That's not too bad. I might add some more chocolate chips. I might, and then you start making little adjustments to improve it. But the moment you're like, it's not working. Ugh, it's horrible. Same with the trading plan, right? You're running the trading plan. It's red. It's red. It's red. It's red. Ugh, it's horrible. It tastes disgusting. It's not working. Throw the whole thing out. Well, actually, find the problem. 
look at the brownie, look at the trades, look at the charts and say, where's that damn onion? Ah, it's because I'm holding these trades, because I'm taking more trades than I need to in my losing days. That's damaging the plan. Ah, it's because I'm a little bit early on this. My stop needs to be wider. That's damaging the plan. That's your onion. That's the thing that needs to be taken out. And from there, you've now got a decent base you can build from. So there's something to, some sort of food for thought, food for thought, like a pun, food for thought about, um, you know, how you could go really find the, uh, the, the challenge in your trading plan. Okay, so what's next for you? So we run through some of the ideas and ways to kind of do a trade review process. Um, it's a challenge for you if, if you'd like to kind of move this forward yourself. And ultimately, it comes down to you, right? Design your own daily review process. It doesn't have to be fancy. It can be four things, three things, whatever. It's just something you're going to review. How you mark up your charts, how you analyze your own performance. Simple, simple stuff. What's your week in focus process? So again, super simple. I'm just reviewing my daily review. I'm putting them all together and on my charts, and I'm looking with these intentions. I want to do this, 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 and this. Don't make it a massive ream of stuff. Just like when you're setting trading rules, you don't have 50 rules and try and stick them all. You just commit to doing it, right? And you just say to yourself, hey, you know what? That's what I'm going to do every day. And it's going to take me two minutes to do this. And it's going to take me five minutes to do my chart, seven minutes per day. Can I do that to improve my trading? Well, if you can't, you might have to wonder whether this is what you want to do. I'm pretty sure you can carve out seven minutes and then a week in focus process. And again, that's 15 minutes, 30 minutes, may, maybe an hour if you're taking a real time over it and you're sitting there with a coffee on a Sunday morning and you're taking your time, maybe. But you get the idea. It's not hours and hours and hours. And just commit to doing it. Two weeks. Commit to doing it for two weeks. And, you know, that can be challenging, right? That that can be tough to do. I get it. Sometimes it's hard to stick with something, um, which is why, and this is always why, having the goal is so important remembering what you're doing right remembering that you know you're trying to get the information from your own trades to improve you're trying to say what's the current price been doing that i can improve my strategy how can i become the best trader possible by being absolutely dialed in to current conditions and tweak adjust adapt what's the trader i'm becoming the trader i'm becoming is one who's very adaptable to current conditions he's an active trader yes but he's adaptive he adjusts and the same is you know from review process i'm learning all the time you're improving you're making a mistake do i need to make a course correction or is it just a one off thing is something creeping in is there a commonality we talked about that a thread that's running through my losers that actually i need to watch out for is there something positive running through my winners that actually i can put more pressure on you know hey maybe you're very very good at trading those breakouts after a catalyst okay great does that require more size? Is that something you need to do to adjust your training plan and say, you know what, I can actually trade less days, but I can allocate the same risk capital on the week to maybe fewer trades, which means bigger size, but actually the risk on the week is the same. You get the idea. And the thing is, if you use this two-pronged approach, you're going to force yourself forward like a speedboat. You're going to help accelerate yourself forward because you've got two engines fueling it. And only if you've got the learning from the actual price action, the market environment, but you've actually got the consistent improvement and learning from your actual trades as well. Um, but again, it only works if, if you do it. So something here I've got for you. Many of you have this already. That's fine. I developed, I, I didn't develop it at all. I had somebody build this for me. It's a Google Sheet download. It's called the Trader's Discipline Tracker. You're welcome to download it free of charge. And it's a Google Sheet and you can put in, hey, this is what I'm going to do each day, my daily markup my daily performance review and it allows you just to chick 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 check that's a, that's a that's a cross between a check and a tick right it allows you to check it off each day and you might not be perfect right and that's that's what this is designed for it's down to say okay i can't do it i've, well, I've not done it every day but next week i'm doing a little bit more next week i'm doing a little bit more next month do a lot. And it helps you improve month to month so something this is a very useful tool for that okay I think we've covered everything there. We have got some time for uh, your questions, ladies and gents. If you would like to, I will bring you over here. Uh, okay. How would you um, how would you distinguish your trade exit? I had a trade earlier today where I exited at the end of my trade daytime in profit, but I had a hunch that it would 
go to a certain price point, which it did. Do I trust the hunch or keep the habit of cutting my trade in exit time? Um, hunches don't pay bills. They don't, they don't work. Um, now, why I say that is that you, what's the most, the best way to approach this, and I say with the best intentions, you know, I'm, I'm messing with you. If it's part of your plan, fine. But trading on a whim and trading, kind of leaving a lot of decisions up to the last minute, you know, that just doesn't serve you. I don't know how much experience you've got, whether you're a developing trader, whether things are going, I don't know, I don't know what kind of your level, but you need to say to yourself, or oh, I would, I, if it was me, I'd be saying, okay, hey, this is my trade exit. Um, uh, today, we're in a rotational environment today. Okay, but we had a bit of, you know, out of nowhere, a bit of a flush, but generally speaking, pre FOMC, I'm not going to start being aggressive and looking for, for for like trend days. So I would go into the day saying, actually, I'm just going to take everything out. There's my there's my final uh, final target. I'm done. The trade is done. However, however, saying that, you could add into your plan. I will take out two thirds of the position or three quarters of the position at my target, and I will run and trail a third or a quarter. That way, it's not an all or nothing decision you're making. You're just saying, right, three quarters there, and I will trail and see where the next bit goes. And you might say, hey, I will trail under the low of a one-minute candle, a five-minute candle, 15, what if you trade? Or I'll trail under the low of a moving average, or whatever it is. That's one good way of trying to get over the challenge of, hey, it's at my target, um, but I don't know where it should come out, it shouldn't come out. If your plan says come out, you come out. But if your plan says hold it, you hold it. But a hybrid approach is to say, I'll take out a chunk and I'll run a chunk. Now, the good thing about that is that you are soothing that internal voice that's saying, hold it, don't do hold it. But you're also seeing with data if your hunch is actually accurate. Like you might think, well, today it went my way. and I'm, yeah, My hunch is great. But, you know, if that's one out of 10, you conveniently forget the other nine, which are human beings, that's not going to serve you. But when you're actually doing this and you're noting down and saying, hey, I held that and you see it with data, that runner... Actually, only one time out of 10 did it go in my favor. The other time, did, then in which case you don't need to do it. Or you might say, actually, that runner works really, really well. I'm going to incorporate in the trading plan and I'm actually going to hold half of the position or maybe all the position for a little bit further. Okay. Uh, that's a good question. That was uh, Roby says, Roby's back. He is a regular on the webinars. Good to see you. Thank you for the feedback there. Um, Quick question. When you talk about markup chart at the end of the day, I can definitely say it was helpful when I trade a US session. Since I switched to trade the NASDAQ pre-market during the EU open for two hours, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. UK, what is your advice to focus on for people that trade pre-market since the EU open till US open? Uh, what's your question there? When you talk about markup chart, uh, what's your advice? I, I, I'm not quite sure what your question is there, but I'm going to guess. I'm going to make a, make a stab at it. Are you suggesting that, um, you know what, I, I, here's a question for you. I would say, why are you trading the NASDAQ during 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. when the DAX is probably, and personal, personal opinion here, the better instrument if you're trading the European session? Um I would say if you're trading that early on, America's not up. The futures are probably just moving based on Europe at that moment. So unless you've got edge watching the kind of European futures, the Euro stocks, the DAX, the FTSE, and then trading the NASDAQ from that, I would maybe go, oh, well, is the DAX not a better vehicle from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m.? Maybe it's got a good reason for that. But that was my, but with my thinking. Um uh, Peter, Peter says, doing reviews daily helps build his discipline muscle. Then that muscle can be used in other areas of your trading. Absolutely correct. And that's the name of the game, right? It's to build that muscle so that you can then sit there in front of the heat of the moment and say, I am going to hold this or I'm not going to trade this. Um, where can I find a link for the spreadsheet? Oh, yes. Sorry. I should have said that was very, very foolish of me. If you go to Traders Mastermind, tradersmastermind.com, top right. I want to say and click there, download the discipline tracker. It will open up that page. You can put your email address in it and, you, and you'll be sent it straight away. Uh, a few questions have asked, have been asked about that. Uh, Andrew says, with a potential 50 bips on the Fed interest rate on the card, 
with the NAD that's that gap in a specific direction, I would think 100 points on 25. Any ideas? What if you know what? Go and Andrew, it's a good question. Go and re, uh, watch that Chris Weston video because Chris talks about not just being about the the actual uh, the number, but more importantly, the language behind it. Because and I'm not going to repeat what he said, but I think that's very important. Like maybe there is that impulsive move. But actually, if there's if, if if the language behind it is like, well, who did this because of this, this, and this, it will soothe the market. You know, it's like it's potential says, oh, you know, are people desperate? Is it is it is it some more? Is it a, a cause for concern if they're cutting fifty? Is it? I think it's not quite as clear as that. Um, and I don't think anyone actually knows so much. I think it's being prepared for the different scenarios. Um, and and what you've said is here. I'd think hundred points on this. You, you may well be right. Uh, and maybe it's more on a 50 or maybe it has the opposite effect. Um, but definitely watch that Chris Weston video. He is far more in tune with the macro type of stuff than I am for sure. I'm a, I'm a price action uh, trader. Anonymous attendee, how do I reduce impulsive trading, especially on slow moving days? <laughs> that is a good question. Um, you've just got to exercise this discipline muscle. Go and download that discipline tracker, tradersmasterwine.com. I want to say forward slash dis discipline hyphen tracker, but you can find it on this super easy. Or, or you use your own sheet. You don't even have to use that Google sheet. It's there for you. It's free. But you can use your own. But just try to say to yourself, right, um, how do I know it's a slow-moving day first? It's all very odd to say it's a slow-moving day after the event. But in the heat of the moment, you're like, oh, I'm just going to trade. I'm just going to trade. I'm going to trade. Right? But actually, you a good, a good idea is to say, well, what what how do I categorize this as a slow-moving day? I call them dirty candles, right? Candles are up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, oscillating around the open. Nothing much is happening. If I look at that and go, this is choppy, then at that point you say to yourself, ah, do you know what? I'm not going to trade today. I'm just going to turn the machine off and walk away. And that's something you just have to do. Peter's often talked about walking his dog. You know, and he was talking about more of potentially to, when he was in a trade, but it's the same thing. You've got to exercise the muscle of discipline that says, you know in your heart, I should not be trading today. I will do very poorly today. I am not going to trade. And when you've made that decision, Mr. Anonymous or Mrs. Anonymous attendee, you say to yourself, okay, I am done. Donk. The screen is shut. My broker platform is off. I'm going to come back at the end of the day because you probably know and what I'm passionate about is I, I've been there. I've done that. We, we've all been there and done that. We've had the impulsive trading. We, we realized we shouldn't have got caught in it. We dug a big hole for ourselves. We look back at the p and in the month and go, that big red day was because I just traded on some crappy stuff. You just have to get used to doing it and get a win. So when you walk away from the screen one day when it's choppy, give yourself a pat on the back and go, yeah, that's exactly what a, a good trader does. That's exactly how I want to behave. You know, giving yourself the win for that and the dopamine hit from that rather than the green PL. And if you can attach your value and stand as a trader to how you behave under certain conditions, whether that's execution, whether that's taking stops, whether that's running trades, whether that's walking away from markets that you know you don't do very well on, then you start to see improvements because you start to say, you know, I walked away and I would have got chopped up to hell on that. So it's just doing it, doing it bit by bit. Uh, Gary says, I like the like the run with the quarter or third and trailer approach. Hybrid, as you say, not all or nothing. Gary, honestly, pal, I think it's a game changer that because the, the internal dialogue is if I take it, you know, it's going to go further on. If I don't want to give back that unrealized PL, I wanted to bank that. Blah, blah, and you sit in there, and before you know it, the market's doing this, you're making a rash decision. It's a simple thing. And then you can adjust over time based on your performance. You go, right, I'm going to bank three quarters of it. Fine. That pleases that side of the voice. I'm going to run a quarter. He's reasonably happy. Okay. And then over time, I can look at the data and go, actually, I need to run more because running it, I'm a bit, uh, a bit eager with the bit keen with the exit. And, and that's a really good way of doing it. And then over time, what happened, Gary, is you go, hey, on these plays, I don't even need to think about closing this damn trade. Do not touch it. Do not even think about closing it the chance of this running to highs are very very strong the chance of it closing the days at highs or lows are very very strong i'm not going to i've got this thing by the throat now i'm not going to let it go you know and that's kind of a way of looking at it as well um uh, this gentleman says thanks for the submission sir please elaborate more on how to take half profit while holding the position longer um, you just close half your position. So whatever platform you're using, MT4, uh, C Trader, TradingView, whatever, you can you can just close half your position. So say you've got 
well, I don't need to say what half position is, right? Whatever your position is, you just halve it and say, as it gets to your key level, let's say you got four on, as it gets to key level, uh, you take two off and then you, you just got two left and you might bring your stop up on two or you take three off and leave one to run. You just, you just kind of chop your position up depending on what you're trading, whether you're trying to spread bet or CFD, whoever it might be. Um, and just just to take half of the profit off the table and then look to hold the other position and treat that as a fresh trade. Can you get the recording? Yeah, you can, Paul. Uh, Pepperstone will email it to you. Uh, Rowie says, I think about the DAX. I notice I am more in focus during the morning since I'm in the EU time zone. So I'm trying to find asset for the morning inside the uh, US afternoon. I'm trying to find asset to trade for the morning inside the US afternoon. Uh, you know, Robbie, you say more folks in the morning, then just stick to, you do your DAX, man. Just do your DAX. I know you say you're looking for something to trade uh, in the US afternoon. I think that's what you're saying. Then, I mean, you could trade the NASDAQ as well. But if you're really focused and you've got energy, then put all your effort into trading the DAX. There's plenty of opportunity there. Andrew says, thanks so much. You're welcome, sir. Um, what is the realistic risk reward ratio in terms of passing challenges or trading in futures? I'm currently a one to one ratio and it's hard to actualize profits well there's a lot more to that question um let me see if i can give you an overview here risk reward ratio uh okay let me give you let me let me reframe that it's not the question you've asked but let me let me reframe that for ease of what we're talking about today so risk reward ratio you've got to oh god i've opened a can of worms here okay two minutes for this can of worms ready okay we've got two two scales we can adjust and it's not the question you asked but there's the answer you get in <laughs> You've got the the um, risk reward ratio on the trade. So two to one means you're risking uh, one to make two. So you're risking hundred bucks to make two or hundred pounds to make two hundred pounds. Right? We all know, understand that. And they've got the probability of success. So what I mean by the probability of a win, that's very difficult to quantify because we don't know. But you know, some trades have a certain a much higher expectancy than others just from your screen time experience. Like if you're buying a kind of flush into downsize, a high volume, blah, 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 good extension, starts to pause, there's a, it's a high probability you're going to get some kind of pop, right? And But you might not get two to one. You might get one to one on that. But the, but the probability of success, you believe, is quite high. So maybe you mark that at 70%, 80%. I'm just making numbers up. Then that works out as a trade, right? It's one to one, but you eight or ten of those trades, eight of those win, you're gonna make money. Okay, but then you've got the other dial of okay, you kind of go down the level of success, and maybe you're taking a pullback type of trade, and maybe you give it and making numbers up again a 60% chance of success. And you go, well, that could reach the high again. I think there's a high chance we hit the high. Um that's a two to one risk reward ratio. You gain on your risk reward ratio, but you kind of dial down the probability of success. Okay. Because obviously, the more, the higher targets you've got, the further the target as well. That the, the further the target is away from your current price, the less likely it is to hit. Okay. So the, you've got some five to one, six to one, seven to ones. And then when you wrap it on with the size of the stop, if the stop is very, very tight, it's a ch high chance of it being hit as well. So you've got to have it stop reasonably wide. And if you're going two, three, four, five to one, that becomes less and less likely. And so the chances of success might go down to maybe 30%. But if you've got four to one plus five to one, that's okay. So you kind of, your job as a trader is to work out A, where you fit mindset wise. Do you want frequent winners? In which case you ain't going to get 10 to one all the time, right? You can't play that game. And so you go, you know what? I want a high win rate, but I'm prepared to kind of go one to one, you know, and that's, that's tough because you're kind of grinding stuff out and you know, it's a very personal thing of how you choose to do this. Or you say, you know what? I want the occasional five to one, 10 to one. I'm prepared to lose a lot of the trades or most of the trades to get that big winner. And you kind of adjust those dials depending on the time frame you're trading, the market regime you're trading and how you like to trade. So based on the question, it depends on what you're doing. You know, if you're doing one-to-one -one and you're finding it hard to kind of get any traction, then your your strategy is ineffective number one because you obviously don't have that frequency of success or win rate is not high enough to overcome the one-to-one -one ratio if your win rate was 80 percent 90 percent which is, is a lot but if it was then you know you, you'd be fine you'd be okay but if you're finding that's a problem your win rate is not good enough you need to stretch your target you need to force yourself to look for two to ones three to ones more depending on the regime 
But, it, you know, we were opening a can of worms. Why I said opening a can of worms here? Because it does depend on your strategy. It does depend on where you're taking the trade. It does depend on so many factors. You know, you can't expect to be taking a trade as a breakout to fresh highs and expecting a full another ATR move on the day. You know, it just ain't going to happen. And so, you know, but if you're taking a reversal off lows, back to VWAP, back to maybe fresh highs, then that, that that's maybe worth it. So long-winded away, let's let's put the can of worms back, uh, of, of saying, hey, maybe you could try expanding your um, your risk-reward ratio a little bit. If you're struggling with that, then force yourself to look for two-to-ones, maybe three-to-ones, but as long as it, it matches the structure of the trade you're taking, if you're asking for a lot from the price to go through prior highs, do this and do that to get your target, then the chances are low. But if you say, actually, I've got a good entry here, I can get a two-to-one, just by going back to the opening print, let's say you're taking a reverse off the lows, that's a reasonable probability. You're not asking for a massive amount from the market and you, you're getting a little bit more from the trade when it goes your way. So that's something to uh, consider. Oh, I've got no more questions. No, I haven't. It's just thanks. Well, thank you very much for your feedback, ladies and gents. I hope you've enjoyed this one. We should be back again next week. Um, what's the topic? Pepperstone will send you a webinar. Anyway, hope you enjoy this one, guys. Take care. Happy FOMCing tomorrow. Bye-bye.